Hey, our science class. This is uh, lesson number three. It says, Doc, I'm glad to be here. Glad to see everybody. Um, this is one of those weird subjects that it's so hard to really explain in words that sometimes um, a video can uh, explain a lot better than even I can do. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about um, seismographs and seismic waves. And I'm going to have you watch a video on it first, and it'll explain everything about earthquakes and why we have uh, um, seismic waves and how they occur and the type that they are. And then once you watch the video, I'll go over it again. So hopefully this will work. I haven't done this yet, so I'm going to give it a shot. Um, I'm going to take the camera and point it at the, the video and play the video, and then hopefully um, it'll come through clear on the other side of this. Okay, so we'll find out. All right, here we go. The motion we feel on the surface of the earth during an earthquake comes from energy released deep within the earth. This energy is transmitted to the surface by earthquake waves. The study of earthquakes and earthquake waves is called seismology. Earthquakes occur when rocks deep underground suddenly break under pressure or slip along a fault. The point of release is known as the focus of the earthquake. The energy released by the earthquake radiates from the focus as body waves. There are two types of body waves. The fastest wave is called a P wave or primary wave. It moves between four to seven kilometers per second depending on the density of the rock it's moving through. A P wave is a compression type wave. Rocky material in its direction of travel compresses, then expands as the wave passes. A P wave is similar to a wave traveling through a spring. The coils compress and expand in the direction the wave is traveling. The second type of body wave is called an S wave or secondary wave. It travels at about two to five kilometers per second through rock, about half the speed of a P wave. An S wave is a transverse shear wave. Rocky material in its path moves up and down or side to side, perpendicular to the direction of the wave's travel. An S wave is similar to a wave traveling along a piece of rope. The wave moves along the rope by moving a section of the rope up, then down. Surface waves radiate outward from the epicenter, the point on the surface closest to the focus. Surface waves are slower than body waves, traveling at two to three kilometers per second. They can change the surface of the earth as well as damage home, buildings, and other structures. There are two types of surface waves. A love wave causes side-to-side -side motion perpendicular to its direction of travel. It can cause damage by breaking roads and pipes. The second type of surface wave is called a Raleigh wave. It moves the surface of the earth up, forward, down, and back in a circle. It can cause damage by knocking buildings off their foundations. In most earthquakes, combinations of love and Raleigh waves cause the most destruction because the ground shakes up and down and side to side at the same time. Okay, there you have it. There is the, the short video right there. Um, I hope that was clear enough for everybody to see. I'll check it out after I finish talking here. So, the bottom line is that when the um, earthquakes occur, we get shaking, right? And what causes that? Well, way down in the center of the earth, when the plates move next to each other and they slide and they move or they collide, um, that's one way we get energy released. Oh, sometimes it'll be a volcano. Um, there's several other, an explosion. Uh, there's some man-made things that we do that cause, cause waves, seismic waves. But typically when we're talking about seismic waves, seismographs, um, we're talking about uh, the, the results of an, of an earthquake and how we um, are determining 
uh, the we have a Richter scale that tells us how how much the land is moving up and down. Okay, and that's going to be one of your assignments. Um, I'm going to have you try to to simulate a Richter scale by going on a car ride, and I'll explain that in a second. But f so what they were saying was, way down deep at the focus of the energy when the plates move, the plate tectonics, you know, when the plates rub against each other, or collide together, or move apart, that causes energy to be released through the body of the Earth. Okay, and when we mean body, we mean like through a chunk of Earth heading towards the surface. When it reaches the surface, that's called the epicenter. And that's when you hear on the news and they'll say, in you know, Nepal, there was a 6.9 uh, earthquake um, and the epicenter was you know 2.3 miles deep into the ocean or 2.3 miles deep down on the ground or wherever. Um, that's really the focus. The epicenter is where it hits at on the surface and that's where all the damage is done, okay? So um, I'm gonna try to lean back here and hopefully you can see on my whiteboard here, uh, seismic, seismic wave, there's two types they talked about. Okay, there's the surface and then that was the Love and O'Reilly waves. That's the ones that we feel, the surface ones. But what I'm really concerned about is the body uh, wave, which occurs deep down in the earth. And there's two types of body waves. There was the primary wave, the one that goes fast and pushes the rock up in sections like that, like a slinky. If you took a slinky and you kind of push it up like a spring, it would do that. The other one is called the secondary wave. And that's the one that's like the one on the rope where they were talking about where it kind of undulates like this, okay? And then when it reaches the surface, then you have those other waves, the love, ra love wave. Not this type of wave, but a, a wave. And then the Raleigh wave, okay? So, um, to kind of demonstrate the, the way the, um, the um, body waves work is I have a, uh, let's see here, I have a drawing of a chunk of earth right here, a square block of earth. And if you were doing the P wave, the first one, it'd be like pushing up on the earth and then slowly everything gets pushed up till it reaches the top, okay? Where the other way, the secondary way, it would be like if you hit the block on the side and it kind of jiggled back and forth all the way to the top. That's what the secondary wave would be like, okay? And if you're sitting uh, in uh, where they have the um, seismographs and where they have the Richter scale on the, on the you know, in, in a research facility, the, the line would be flat and all of a sudden maybe a little wave and then a big wave, big, big wave. Then it calmed down, maybe aftershock, and it calms down, okay? Then it's flat again. And kind of looks like a heartbeat, which is similar, but um, basically what's happening is in that period of time where there's this big swings, the amplitude, I told you that's a bigger earthquake than maybe the little pre shock or the post shock or the aftershock okay so um, that's basically what I wanted you to understand about P waves and S waves and they talk about that in Khan Academy and for your assignment though this should be kind of fun what I want you to do is I want you to get a piece of paper okay like this uh, something uh, hard to to write on like a book you know a book like this or a binder or something 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 hard and you're gonna um, next time you guys go out into the car and sometimes you're just gonna go around the block you know how you want to just get out of the house sometimes well, this would be a good excuse because what you can do is you can uh, sit in the sit in the, the back seat as your parents are driving around have them go on surface streets where there's um, stop signs and uh, bumps and speed bumps or whatever so it's not just a flat, smooth surface. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold your pencil barely touching the paper and move it along. And as you hit a bump, whoop, it's gonna go up like that. Maybe a big bump, big bump, and then maybe no bump. And let's see what kind of um, design you end up coming up with when you're in your car in the back seat. And you'll see that those bumps, those simulate how it, the Richter scale would record it. Um, for, for a real earthquake, okay? Uh, so that's kind of a fun assignment to do. 
If you can't do it, don't worry about it. This is just something fun uh, for you to see um, what actually happens when you try to draw a perfectly straight line in a moving car. Things get bumpy and jump up and down, and that happens in earthquakes too. All right. So uh, it's good to see you guys, and I'll see you at my um, either my chat room at 11 or see you at my office hours at 8 o'clock in the morning, and we'll go from there, okay? So, hey, good talking with you. Doc out.